So what we're going to go through is understanding what the body is telling you so that you don't think that you're getting worse when you're actually healing. And if you knew that you were healing, your symptoms of detoxing, which they actually are, would go away so much faster and you would get to the next level so much faster. If you're unsure of what's going on and you think that you're getting worse, your mind is going to go, you're getting worse. Stupid fucker, why are you doing this? Everyone else is right and you think you're going to heal yourself with celery juice? What is wrong with you? How stupid are you? Look, I don't know about you, but that's a lot of my self-talk. And I would just spiral out of control and it would take me months to get out. I want to go through on this class. That's why I named it. What did I name it? Mastering the Evolution of Healing MS because that's exactly what it is. It's an evolution. The evolution is what you have to master. If you had to do this protocol perfectly, there's no way that I would have ever healed. Ever, ever, ever. I don't do anything perfectly. In fact, no human does anything perfectly. The way you do it is going to be different for you and everybody else. No two people experience the protocol the same way. No two people do it the same way, nor should they. It's going to look different for you. When you first get started, you have to first understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. When you go into this protocol, whether it's this protocol or any protocol, I'm not trying to tell you do one over the other. That's, again, entirely up to you. But let's talk about my protocol since that's what I know best. So you have to know why you're doing it before you, got it, before you start doing what we do with the protocol. Why are we doing this? How are we going to heal? Why is this important? We're killing a virus. That's all we're doing. I don't have to convince anybody anymore. Now everybody knows it's a virus. It's the Epstein-Barr virus that's in our body. Is our immune system attacking us? No, it's attacking a virus. It's been protecting us from day one. We don't have to go there anymore, but you do have to understand what it feels like to kill a virus. And if you do it too quickly, what those symptoms are. When you first get started, you clearly have to understand, I'm killing a virus. I'm killing a virus that has been able to evade the medical community for nearly 100 years. So the fucker is smart. It knows how to hide inside of the body. And it is going to take me months in order to get through all the layers of all of my organs to kill all of the virus. This is an evolution. If you go too fast and kill the virus too quickly, you are going to overwhelm your body with the dead virus. The corpse of the virus itself is a neurotoxin. It's a dermatoxin. to kill this virus slowly. Our minds are extremely quick. We grasp information and we're like, all right, we're going to do it. She says she healed with this protocol. I'm doing it. Balls to the wall. I get it. You're very much like me. We're all attracted to each other for a reason. We're, we're no balance, all or nothing. And this is why I'm telling you I learned the hard way by doing it all, all at once. Our minds are quick. We want to do things, we want to heal, and we want to heal quickly. Our bodies are on a completely different timeline, completely different. It's going to work in its own time, which is a hell of a lot slower than what we want. Always, always slower than what we want. We have to give our bodies time to expel the virus. And we have to do it very slowly because if you say, you know what, screw my body, I am d I'm going to get this virus out. It's going to take you down so far that when you finally get back up again, you're going to say, no way, I'm never going through that again. That was awful. Imagine if you never worked out before. Okay, it's been since before you had the baby. So, years. It's been years since you worked out. It was like three months pregnant. It was the last time I lifted anything heavy. What if I started working out one day and I'm lifting 25 pound weights and I'm doing all the things? I'm doing these, I'm doing these, I'm doing the whatever they're called. What if I did all of the weights on every part of my body and I went balls to the wall that day and I said, the harder I work out, the more muscle I'm going to build? It doesn't work like that, does it? No. The next day, if I'm able to get through that kind of workout, the next day I would be completely bedridden because I wouldn't be, all the lactic acid in my muscles, I wouldn't be able to move. Everything would be sore. I'd be like, don't look at my muscles. It hurts to look at them. They'd be so sore. It would take me weeks to recover from all the tearing of the muscle that I just did. But instead, how do you get started working out if you haven't worked out for years? 
you lift little things, five pound weights, 10 pound weights, you work out for 10 minutes the first day. The next day, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna be like, oh God, I'm really out of shape. It's, I only worked out for 10 minutes yesterday. But do you see how then you're like, all right, let me take today off and I'll start again tomorrow because you were just a little bit sore. It's the same thing when you heal your body. You have to go slow when you first begin to kill the virus. The so. foundation of healing, the absolute foundation that you have to work on is killing the virus yes but we're not just removing we're also adding we're adding all of the antioxidants that we get from the fruits and vegetables to build up our immune system so that our immune system is as strong as it could be to attack the virus because this is how it works in the body the virus right now is so healthy and so strong if you're feeding it um, gluten dairy eggs heavy metals if you're feeding it the virus is nice and strong when the virus is strong, it can flow through the body, mainly our organs, mainly if you're diagnosed with MS, it's gonna be your liver. If it's thyroid, you can get diagnosed with thyroidism. If it's in your gut, depending on how bad it is, it's either gonna be IBS or Crohn's disease. This virus is so smart and so strong, it's floating around your body, it's in your liver, and it's emitting a smoke screen. Very much like when an octopus inks and gets away to get away from its predators that's exactly what the virus does it emits like this smoke this fog so your immune system can't see it it confuses the shit out of your immune system your immune system goes i know you're there i know you're there but i just can't freaking see you so your immune system and here's the reason for the fatigue is trying to fight this virus that it senses is there but can't directly attack it or see it because of that smoke screen and so you're fighting a virus and your immune system is going 24 7 24 hours a day seven days a week that's why we're exhausted that's why the fatigue is so bad you're like i didn't do anything why am i so tired because of your immune system that has been protecting you from the day you were born there's nothing wrong with your body the reason why you're tired is because your body is working really hard because it's healthy enough to work really hard to kill the virus what we want to do is starve the virus so that we give help to our immune system because think about it here comes your immune system and it's like okay i gotta kill this virus one i can't see it okay and so i'm just going to keep trying and keep trying that's why we're exhausted if we start starving the virus by not feeding it gluten dairy eggs heavy metals we start starving the virus the virus goes oh my god i'm so weak i have no food i can't i can't even i don't even have the energy to put that smoke screen out Shit, they're gonna get me and the immune system goes, oh, I can see you. And it starts the attack and it gets it. And that's why the virus begins to die feverishly when you stop feeding it, when you create an environment inside your body that the virus cannot live in. The first stage of the protocol is the lemon water. Why? Because we have to get our bodies to absorb the water that we're drinking. If you're drinking just plain water, okay, that's great, but are you enjoying it? Do you actually want to drink that plain water? I had a meeting at the bank today, and this woman came back, the woman who was helping me, she came back with a big container of um, water with all the cool little quotes on it, like, you're doing great, and at 3 p.m., you're a badass, uh, 10 more ounces to go, and it was just plain water. So I'm like, and she sits down, and she's like, oh, gotta drink my water. I'm like, yeah, I hate drinking plain water, don't you? She's like, yeah, it's like a part-time job. This is, this is not, not even worth it. And I go, and you're probably peeing like, what, every hour? And she's like, every half hour. She goes, this is awful, but my doctor said I needed to drink more water. So I said, I got a little trick for you. I said, if you want to pee less, put lemon in the water. She's like, what? I said, yeah, my brother just tested it out. And he's like, Janine, I can't believe that works. I'm like, yeah, exactly. It works because the lemon allows the water to get absorbed into the, the, your gut lining. If you don't have lemon or lime, any citrus works. If you don't put that in your water, your water goes in and then it goes out immediately because it doesn't get absorbed. And then you're going, why am I drinking all of this water? I'm peeing out, I feel like more than I'm even drinking. And yeah, yeah, that's exactly what's going on. So add the lemon to the water and it starts getting in there. It starts getting like in the body and, and it starts hydrating everything. And now everything is moving along so much better. I had a conversation with my mother. I'm trying to remember it on the spot right now because I didn't plan to talk about this. But she, is, she doesn't drink a lot of water. And I saw her go from, from afternoon coffee 
to evening wine. I'm like, am I not gonna drink any water in between? She's like, no, 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 I, I, I don't like peeing so much. I'm like, okay, so we talked about the water. The water is how the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, all the things that keep us alive, travel through the body. Without enough water, the shit that we need to get to the places that we need to get it to can't get there. Everything is so sluggish and it's barely moving. And that's an easy fix. If you just drank more water, a little bit more water, maybe add some lemon into it, your body's gonna go, oh, oh, I can get the vitamin C here and I can get the calcium here and I'm moving and wow, that alone is going to help the fatigue levels. <sighs> Am I staying on track here? Okay, so we're still on the foundation and it's 522. All right, so we're laying the foundation, we're starving the virus, we're bringing up our immune system. Now. When you begin, we're talking about the evolution here. When you begin this protocol, if you're working directly with me, I'll always tell you, so hear this now if you're not working directly with me. Hear this now. The lemon water alone can start causing crazy symptoms. Uh, my mother's husband, who doesn't have anything diagnosed with him, anything, he's like, you know, I don't think my body liked the lemon water. I said, oh, that's interesting. Why, speaking of lemon water, I have to drink it hot. It's so freaking cold here in Jersey. It's below 70. I'm cold, you know, any degree below 70. He goes, yeah, it's not working for me. I go, why? He goes, I had diarrhea. He'd kill me if I was saying this. Well, anyway, you guys don't know. He goes, I had diarrhea for like two freaking weeks. I go, oh my God, that's awesome. He goes, how are you saying that that's awesome to me? How is that awesome? I had diarrhea for two weeks. I said, well, you should have called me. You know, first couple days, I would have told you to back off the lemon water. It's not the lemon water that is the problem. It is the pathogen that the lemon water is killing inside your gut lining. Just like the celery juice, that lemon water is going to kill pathogens immediately on contact in your gut lining. Once that, that pathogen is dead, your body has an immune response to it and it goes, what the hell, what is that? Because <clears throat> pathogens are even more toxic when they're dead, isn't that nice? The corpse of them, just like the corpse of the Epstein-Barr virus is a neurotoxin and a dermatoxin. When we're killing pathogens inside our gut lining, my, your body goes, oh, guess what? I got to lay at the end of the tunnel. I'm getting this shit out of here. Like, literally, I'm getting this shit out of here. And that's why you have diarrhea. So I told him, like, listen, you're killing the pathogens too quickly. Back off the lemon water a little bit. Add less or add none until the diarrhea goes away and then start back up again. He thought the lemon water was bad for him when I, because of the symptom. I mean, obviously, logically, it's giving me diarrhea. Obviously, it's bad for me. But no, we have been taught that food poisoning, something foreign inside of our body, our bodies will expel with diarrhea. Well, guess what? Our bodies are going to expel anything that's not supposed to be in there. And that dead pathogen that that lemon water just killed is not supposed to be in there. So your body's going to use its exit strategy that it would use if it was food poisoning or something bad that you ingested. It's not the lemon water, it's what the lemon water killed that is the problem that your body is showing signs of health by being strong enough to take it out the exit, take it out the back door immediately. And once I explained that to him, he was like, oh, wow, well that sounds like a really good thing. I said, yeah, it is. Oh, oh, we have questions. Quinn, I feel like I'm a bit quicker mentally. I can recall so much more. I remember when I was saying that I had those nodes stuck in me and that I couldn't think of the name, nerve conduction test, biofilm, all of these things are finally coming together in my head. Quinn, is that not the best feeling when you're sitting there for years in total confusion and then all of a sudden all of the pieces of the puzzle over the last decade start coming together and painting a picture and you're like, oh, oh, I'm understanding now. Now I'm seeing an improvement. Now that your mind is on board and you're like, this shit actually works, healing is going to happen even faster. Jacintha, my um, heavy metals was tested 2018 at... 80 and the chart goes to 20. Oh, oh, those buggers are well fed. That's great information. I mean, sure, it sucks, but we're all riddled with heavy metals. You can't not be when you live on this planet because between, even if you eat all organic food, it doesn't matter. We're still going to absorb heavy metals. They're everywhere, but that's okay. You don't have to fear anything. And this is another point that I wanted to bring up, and maybe I'll do a separate 
um, video on this subject. There's so much fear around, don't eat this, don't do that, this is bad for you. Your body was designed to take in toxins and release them. Your body was designed to do that. It has kidneys, it has a lymphatic system, it has a liver. Such intelligence built into your body. There is no reason to fear anything because anything this earth can throw at you, your body can handle. Now who in the audience <laughs> is thinking, not my body, you should see my body, it's not handling anything. Let me ask you something. When was the last time you really took care of your body? Before you were diagnosed, leading up to the diagnosis, were you getting those little whispers like I was? Janine, you gotta start taking care of yourself. Janine, you're not, you're, you're not taking care of yourself. You're taking care of everybody else but you. These were the little voices that were going in my head right before, well, let's say years before my diagnosis. I knew that I was running myself ragged, working myself to the bone, trying to please everybody else. And who fell off the priority list all the time? It was me. Were you taking care of your body? No. If you took care of your body, wait, right? Let me back that up because that sounds shaming and blaming. If we were taught how to take care of our bodies, how important it is to clean out our livers, we would have done it, hopefully. We would have taken better care of our bodies because we would have understood the value of it. Once our body, today, because we didn't have that education, once our bodies break and we get diagnosed with something, then we go start shaming our bodies. And we're like, oh, what's wrong with us? And the doctors, <laughs> Just drive that point home when they say, I don't know what's wrong with your body. You know, there's just no cure for it. There's no reason for it. It's just not functioning. It's attacking itself. Now we know better. Mayo Clinic has put out so much research. Harvard, um, the National Institute of Health, just go look it up. Now we know there is a virus inside of us, and that's why we have, have symptoms as they have because of me. That's why I had symptoms. There was a virus inside of us. We just have to go on damage control. We have to go on virus control. And I know I'm making it sound easier than done. That's why I do the videos titled Mastering the Evolution. So let's get back to that. Mastering the Evolution, you are going to master your desire to go balls to the wall, you are going to keep that in check. And you're going to remember that the faster you go, the slower you're going to heal. The slower you go on this protocol, the faster you're going to heal. Remember my workout analogy. I only worked out 10 minutes the first day. I felt it the next day. I was freaking sore. But by the third day, soreness went away. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do another 10 minute workout. I'm not going to go crazy with this. And I slowly built up to, I swear to God, I'm only at 20 minutes these days, so it's been a month. But that's okay, I've learned my lesson, I'm going slow because I can't be taken down. It's the same thing when you begin to heal. You start one thing, and again, my protocol, Wall's protocol, whatever protocol you're doing, I want you to understand and I want to end the unnecessary suffering and I want you to heal. And what happens is, you go, oh my God, I'm getting worse, I better back off when you're not getting worse. So what happens is, you start killing the virus. Even though Terry Walls doesn't ever say that it's a virus, her whole protocol, minus the optional gluten-free, you have to do the gluten-free part. And that's why people come to me from the Walls protocol and they're like, I've only healed 60%. I'm like, all right, we're going gluten-free, watch this. And the rest of the healing happens because gluten is a food source for the virus. So no matter what protocol you're doing, you have to have the discipline. This is the only place where the discipline comes in. You have to have the discipline to go slow and start one thing at a time. So when you're starting the lemon water, the ideal to work up to, remember that, the ideal to work up to is 16 ounces. You're going to work up to that. You're going to start off with four ounces and see how you feel. And you're going to do that for two weeks. You're going to do that for two weeks and then you're going to go, ah, oh, my body's handling this, okay. Or my body's not handling it. I'm going to do it for another three weeks until my body goes, I'm good with the lemon water. I've incorporated it into my morning routine. I don't even have to think about it anymore. I'm ready for the next thing. That's three weeks. Three weeks. Could be longer, could be shorter. Well, let's just say it's three weeks. So here, let me start counting. So that's three weeks. One, two, three. So then I go, okay, now it's time for the celery juice. We're gonna work up to the celery juice. Now that is a shit ton more powerful. It's funny I use the word shit ton. Uh, more powerful than the lemon water. 
because it kills the Epstein-Barr virus on contact. You want to go as slow as possible on that celery juice because if you kill that virus, and I know what you're thinking, but if I kill the virus quicker, I'll heal quicker. That's not how it works at all for anyone. When you start killing the virus, the virus doesn't just leave your body. It has to go through all the filtration systems. If the virus was only in your gut lining, then yeah, kill it all at once. Your body's just going to expel it, but it's not. It's already gotten into our organs. Once we're diagnosed, it's already in the organs, namely the liver and the kidneys. When you start killing the virus, because the celery juice doesn't just kill it here in the gut lining, the celery juice gets absorbed into the body and into the organs where it really needs to find that virus and kill it. The virus has to take the exit routes, the filtration systems, the waste the management routes out of your body. That's the lymphatic system, that's the excretory system, the pee and the poop. That's everything coming out of your skin. I used to break out, I still do, and I know that I'm detoxing. We have these lymph nodes, these like major, um, we used to call them traffic jams, but you have the big nodes that all the lymphatic veins kind of meet up at and they're right back here. That's why when, you're, when you go to the doctor when you're a kid, you'd always feel if your nodes work were swollen. I break out right here. That's when I know, my like, boo, I got to start doing better. I got to start up my water, start doing the celery juice again because it's breaking out, which means my body's not keeping up with the detoxing. When you start that celery juice and your body is detoxing from all of the organs, it has to use the lymphatic, the excretory, it has to use all the detox systems in your body. One, it's exhausting for your body to do that because that's a lot of cleaning that your body has to do. And two, there are a lot of things that are already being cleaned, cleaned out of your body. So you risk uh, backing up the lymphatic system, backing up, slowing down the body. The, that's two. Three, the dead virus itself is a neurotoxin, toxic to your nerves, and it's a dermatoxin, toxic to your skin. And when your body uses the lymphatic system to get rid of the dead virus, the lymphatic system lies right underneath your skin. So when you start healing, when you, you start getting, mostly everyone gets these weird rashes on their skin that they can't explain, and I go, yeah, that's the dead virus coming out. Healing is hideous. Healing is ugly. Only healed, when you can look back and go, oh my God, thank God that's over. It's not fun and it doesn't feel good, but if you understand that you're not the MS, whatever the doctors say, the MS is progressing, it's not progressing. You're not getting worse. You're actually healing. The dead virus is coming out of you, and you're going a little too fast maybe, and that's why you're feeling exhausted, because you killed it too fast. How are you going to know this? Trial and error. This is what I walk through with people, and every single person is different. Every single person that I've worked with for over three years now is different. They heal differently, they have different healing symptoms, but every single one of them heals because you have to trust the process and go through the evolution of incorporating every step, analyzing it before starting the next step. And you have to understand this is what the final, it's going to loop it all together. The Epstein-Barr virus, the whole life cycle of this virus is only six weeks. That's it. The entire life cycle is six weeks. So now you're thinking, all right, so I do this for six weeks and then I'm cured. Yeah, no, because it's a very smart virus. Just like every other cell in our body duplicates, so does the virus. The virus is constantly duplicating itself because it's alive. And just like our cells, that's the aging process, actually. We duplicate our cells um, to the point where we're 18, 19 years old, we duplicate at 100%, and then the aging process starts because our cells are duplicating at less than 100%. And that number goes down and down and down until you're dead. So with getting rid of the virus, where was I? Oh, so the virus also duplicates. The virus also duplicates. So in that six weeks, every hour of every day, that virus is duplicating itself. So it's six weeks and one day, six weeks and two days. Oh, now it's seven weeks, now it's eight weeks. However, in those six weeks, in that life cycle, wherever you begin in their life cycle, you're gonna start starving it. Remember I told you when you are starving the virus, it's unable to produce the smoke screen, so it can't get away, it can't um, evade the immune system. Well, it also can't duplicate itself as rapidly as it can when it's healthy. That's the purpose of starving the virus. So it can't do the smoke screen, and it can't duplicate as quickly. The magic number is like 13 weeks. It's somewhere between 12, 13, and 14 weeks where everybody who does this protocol 
and incorporates each piece of the protocol and analyzes it and then begins the next one. Every single person who does that will feel the shift. And now I'm confident in saying every single person because it is every single person. Because every time I was nervous to go, oh my God, is she gonna feel it? Is she gonna feel it? I hope she's gonna feel it. It's so scary. I would never say this, but now, I, and now I'm totally confident to say, that's fine. I know you're feeling like this. Give it another week or two and you're gonna feel the shift. Everyone feels the shift. The reason is because that life cycle of six weeks, you've starved it. It's starting to duplicate slower. Six, seven, eight, nine, your body is working on getting it out. So your immune system is like, wow, I have less to fight. Holy crap, this, you can barely find this virus anywhere. And all of a sudden your immune system goes, I haven't had a rest day in decades. This feels amazing. And when your immune system finally gets a rest from fighting a virus that has been trying to take you down for decades, your body feels it. And your body goes, oh my God. That's why I get the phone calls of, I went to a Costco. I walked around all day. Or I was wheeled around all day and I came home and I wasn't exhausted. Okay, fruit fly. Anyway, everyone feels that shift if you do it correctly. And correctly doesn't mean you have to do everything perfectly. Take the heavy metal detox smoothie. If you don't have all of the ingredients for the heavy metal detox smoothie, some of our brains, a lot like mine too, just go, you know what? I don't have all the ingredients. I'm not gonna do it today. I'm gonna wait until I can do all the, no, don't do that. No matter what ingredients you have of the heavy metal detox smoothie, even if it's just the wild blueberries, get them in your body. No matter what you give to your body in terms of helping it heal, it's going to thank you and you're going to feel it. When we talk about mastering the evolution of healing, it's really mastering the discipline to not go balls to the wall and not do it all at once. And understanding what the body is trying to tell you because fatigue <clears throat> is an MS symptom. Fatigue. What do you mean I'm healing? What do you mean I'm exhausted because I'm healing? I've been exhausted for decades because I have Mastering the evolution is mastering this and having the ability to not go balls to the wall, to not say, I'm gonna heal quicker than everybody else. No, because what you're gonna do is you're gonna crash and burn and then it's going to take you weeks, sometimes months to come, months to come back from that. You have to understand you're building the foundation first. You're understanding the whole concept behind it. You're starving the virus. You're building up your immune system so it can kill the virus so you can detox it out. That's why the protocol is called Starve, Kill, Detox. People go, do I really have to starve on this protocol? I'm like, oh my God, no, no. That's what we're doing to the virus and that's the reason for your symptoms, the virus. We're starving the virus, we're killing it with the immune system and we're detoxing it out of the body. Fatigue has always been a symptom of MS, and you're like, I have fatigue right now. You're telling me that I'm gonna have more fatigue? Yes, actually, I am. I no longer feel the need to sugarcoat this because this is how it is, and everyone heals doing this, but you have to understand that right now, before you start anything, your body is fighting a virus, and it has been fighting a virus 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for years before you were even diagnosed. So let's say you were diagnosed decades ago, for years before that, your body was fighting this, vi this virus. When you begin to kill the virus, and now your body has to deal with the live virus that it's been fighting, and now you're adding the dead virus to it, which now your body has to work that much harder to get now this dead virus out, yes, it's going to exhaust you because you don't have any energy to give right now. You have no energy to give right now. And so when I'm telling you that it's going to require more energy for your body to get this out, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it anymore. It is going to make you more tired. But then you come out of it. And you only, I try to make sure that you go as slow as possible, right? On the protocol, let's say you're inching through the protocol so that your fatigue level only dips a little bit before it comes back up. Okay, that's saying it the opposite way. So that when you go into that valley where you're feeling more fatigue, it's not that long, it's not that deep, and you come right back up. And every time you come back up, your, your um, energy level is even higher. It's even higher than when it started, okay? So, peaks and valleys, that's another one. Peaks and valleys. Okay, so this is how 
it's going to work. This is how it's going to feel when you start the protocol. You're going to start feeling more tired than you are already. I know that sounds awful, but we're going to take it slow so that's just not too bad. And then when you come back up, this could be days, maybe a week. When you come back up, it's going to be a little higher. Every time you dip down into that tired valley and come back up, you're going to have more energy and more energy. And that's how the healing process goes. You know when people say healing isn't linear? Okay, great, what does that actually mean? It actually means that you're gonna get more tired and more energy. More tired and then more energy. Right now, you're at a freaking baseline. I'm tired all the time, tired all the time. Am I right? Tired all the time. Yes, we're gonna have to dip you down into a little bit more tired, and then you're gonna get a little bit more energy than you had before. And what happens is, I wish I had a whiteboard right now. This up and down, process keeps getting higher and less low higher and less low so if you can put a point on all of those peaks the line is going to be going up but in between this upward line it goes like this understanding what this feels like the mental shit show that we put ourselves through when we do this alone understanding that is what's going to get you through to heal I know when I first heard, oh, you can heal MS, it's possible. I'm like, all right, let's do it. We're doing all the things. You can't, you can't do all the things. You have to take it slow. You have to listen to the people who have come before you. This is why we have this group. This information, it's always going to be free. I'm always going to put this out here. If you want specific information about your situation and you want more than just these lives, schedule a free consultation. I have special hours for people in Australia. I do Thursday nights for people in Australia because my Thursday at 5 o'clock is your 8 a.m. So my Thursday night is your Friday morning. So if that doesn't work for you, just send me a message. We'll work something out. But understand that it's impossible to not heal. It's impossible to not heal. You will heal your symptoms. You have a virus. You have to kill the virus. How hard is it to go gluten-free? Well, if you're doing it by yourself, it could be pretty freaking hard. You need a friend to say, don't eat that. That tastes like shit. And buy this brand. This is really good. And that's what this group is. This is your group of friends who are saying, hey, I've been here. I've done it. This is what it feels like. Let me help you through it. Or it's, hey, I knew. I don't know where to freaking begin. Um, how is this for you? How is that for you? We need a community. We need a tribe to do this together because this fucking disease sucks. And what sucks even more is that when you go to the doctor, they start shaming you and telling you that there's nothing you can do to feel better. There's nothing you can do to end your symptoms. And I'm here to show you, I was paralyzed and 200 pounds using a wheelchair, couldn't take care of my kids. Then my husband freaking left me and guess what? Today, 15 years later, I don't have symptoms unless I let myself and my beliefs get out of control. So that's gonna be another video. When I did lose my legs last summer, I'm gonna tell you the why and the how behind that and how much that has helped me with my clients because of what I learned. It's, it's not just physical. I'm gonna put a little, a little seed in there. It's not just physical. There's a lot going on up here too. And that's what we have to address in the coaching. I can give you all of this information on how to clean out the body. And that is first and foremost, you have to do that. You can't do one without the other, and it always starts with cleaning out the physical body. That's why healing MS is, and that's why I named the group Minding Your Soul, my business Minding Your Soul, because I wanted another acronym for MS, Minding and Soul, Minding Your Soul, because it really is a body, mind, and soul experience to heal yourself. To heal yourself of MS, to heal yourself of old programs, to heal yourself of past trauma, to move on from past trauma, it's all an evolution. And if you can master the evolution of this physical protocol to clean out your body, if you can master that, then by the time we get to phase two and we are clearing out the useless subconscious programs that are keeping us stuck, you've already hit the jackpot. So start with the body. It starts here with the body at Mind Your Soul. And please keep everybody posted on your progress, on your questions. This is the place to do. Do not have to suffer. This is unnecessary. Now, if you want to keep doing what you're doing, please do so. I'm not saying you have to do anything. But now you know you have options. It's available to you. So either 
talk to people in the group, get going. The protocol you can get on mindingyoursoul.com or you can just ask questions here. If you've already done a consultation and you're like, no, we need to go deeper. I think I'm ready for phase two. Schedule a session. If you want a consultation or a session, it's mindingyoursoul.com.